my thing now that I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our intro to computer science in Python workshop today. We are going to be going through some lessons in Python. Um, we have a full jam packed two hour session today. So if you could um, take just a, a few seconds to click the link that we're going to put in the chat to um, mark your attendance for our session today. That would be awesome. We're going to get that one right into the chat in a second. Um, codehs.com slash Python dash attendance. And we have a lot of people coming in right now. All right. And there's a clickable link for you right there. So um, if you want to just take a few seconds and click that attendance link so that we can make sure that you are, um, we are noting our, our numbers here, that would be awesome. And once you do that, if you wanna take just a quick minute to introduce yourself in the chat, where are you coming to us from? Have you used CodeHS before? Have you used the Python course before? Maybe you're brand new, you're, you're interested in bringing a new language to your students, or you've been teaching Python for a while and you're just interested in our curriculum that we have for this course. So if you could give us any of that information in the chat, we're gonna get started in about a minute, but it would be awesome to see who is with us. We have a lot of people here. And I see some familiar names and I see a lot of new names. Awesome, Anthony, thank you for letting me know that you're new to CodeHS, that's good information. And teaching Python for three years already, awesome. New to CodeHS, good, this is great. Awesome, well, I think this is gonna be a great workshop today. We have a lot that we're going to be showing you both about our Python course specifically and also about some tools that we have on CodeHS um, fully um, in general. So I see we might have some um, someone saying they might have an issue with the attendance link. Let me just double check that and see if I can get that going here. Sorry. <laughs> Just want to make sure that this is working for everyone. All right. Yeah, so you should be able to get that link to work, don't worry if it doesn't, um, it's not the end of the world. Um, but we, this is just one way that we can track our attendance and make sure that we have our, our numbers right. We're gonna have um, a way for you, if you are someone who needs to um, show or prove your attendance at today's session to you know an administrator or something, um, we will have a way for you to do that at the end of today's session. So don't worry about that. All right, so, um, we are gonna get started because we have a jam packed two hours. And the first thing that is really, really helpful for us, you're gonna be getting a lot of links at the beginning of our session today. Um, the first thing that I want, oh, first I actually want to introduce to you who else is here with me. So my name is Julia Trigo and I am working at CodeHS as a PD specialist this summer. I actually used to work for CodeHS writing curriculum um, and I worked on this Python course um, when I worked here last year, and then I went back to the classroom. So I now actually am teaching in a high school in Virginia um, and came back to CodeHS for this summer. And now I get to work with teachers like you all summer, um, teaching you about all of our curriculum and the tools that we have at CodeHS. So I'm joined with Ebony Davis, who is gonna be showing us later in our session, a bunch of tools that you have available to you on CodeHS. Um, so that you can use with your, your students. 
And we also have Ursula here with us who is going to be supporting our session. And she is going to be um, answering all your questions, making sure you have everything you need so that you're successful today. If you have any questions as we go through our session, we have a parking lot. That is a really helpful way for you to both ask your questions and make sure that you get those answers. And if you are someone who, you know, maybe you don't have, you don't know what questions you have yet, you can go to that document and see what questions other people are asking and you'll be able to see those answers there as well. So this is a way easier way to ask questions than just asking them in the chat because we um, are able to make sure that nothing gets lost there. We're gonna be using the chat as we go through our lesson today. So it might um, blow up at some certain time. So make sure that as you're asking your questions, you're putting them into um, this document and you don't have to wait until the end of the session. If you have a question right now, you can head right in there and put that question in so that um, we can start getting um, a, an answer for you. And um, we also, the other thing that I think is really helpful to have open in the background as we go through our session today is our workbook. So if you go to codehs.com slash Python dash workbook, you will be able to see our layout for today along with all um, of these helpful links so that it will be really difficult to um, get lost. So we wanna make sure that you are able to follow along and you are able to see um, everything that we have for you today and um, and be able to you know, get to all of these different places. We're gonna be playing with the site on CodeHS today. So we wanna make sure that e you can easily find where you need to be. So if you need an account for um, at CodeHS, if you don't have one yet, you can go to codehs.com slash sign up and make your free teacher account. It will ask you for your school um, so that we can verify that you teach there so that we um, we will give you access then to the solutions for the content that you're going to be teaching. And um, if you already have an account, you can go ahead and take this second to log in. If you um, don't have an account yet, but you're just, you just want to sit back and watch, that is totally fine. Don't feel pressured right now to go and, and try to learn everything. If you're totally new to CodeHS, um, it might be a little bit tricky to navigate all of these different things that we're doing. So it's totally, if you are someone who wants to just sit and watch, go right ahead. That is totally fine. So if you have your account at CodeHS all set, we are going to have a demo workshop course today. And you can go to this link, codehs.com slash go slash 3D20B. And that, those last five digits are the um, code for the course. So when you go to that link, it's going to ask you for a code and that is the code 3D20B. And this is how you're going to join our workshop session today. So um, this will enroll you in as a student into the Python course. And um, we will be using some parts of that course today to go through um, a, a sample lesson. So I'm just going to give everyone like about a minute to make sure that they have this all set up. These directions are also in our workbook. So that this is another reason why that workbook is so helpful. Um, the workbook is gonna have all of that information. Um, there's also links on the parking lot doc. So we wanted to make, make sure that there were a lot of ways for you to access this information if you, um, if you missed it right at the beginning. All right. So hopefully we are ready to go and dive into our session today. Let's see what we're going to cover. So we're gonna start today um, with our account setup. Um, awesome, thank you, William, for letting me know. Ursula or um, Ebony, if you could just change the editing rights on the um, parking lot so that um, everyone can type in there, that would be awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, William, for letting me know. Um, and so we are going to, um, get started by first just looking at this Python course. What is included in this course? What content are your students going to learn if they go through our CodeHS intro to um, CS in Python course? Then we're going to dive in and we're going to have a full sample lesson. So we are going to go through, I'm going to be in the teacher shoes and you guys are all going to have your student hats on and go through a sample lesson in our Python course. 
We're going to then debrief that lesson and look through what were those teacher moves that I was using um, to get you engaged and, and to use the content and the tools on CodeHS. And then we're going to take another look at um, a different lesson in Python and look more deeply at those instructional strategies that we can use with our students. We're going to take a break at some point, probably after those lessons, and then we're going to dive into our full teacher tools and resources. So looking generally at all of the options and resources you have on CodeHS to um, make your, your course go smoothly. All right. Thank you, Ebony. Awesome. So the parking lot is already and open. You should be able to put your questions in there. And we are going to hop over to our intro to Python overview. So all of our courses on CodeHS are broken down into modules. So these are like units or chapters. These are the main um, sections of content that you're gonna have um, in your course. Then inside each module is going to have a bunch of different lessons. So these are gonna be about, usually these are about um, one class period per lesson, but um, I will show you later um, some lesson plans and you can find more information about the timing of lessons in there as well. And inside each lesson, all of these dots that you see are an activity. So some are a video, quiz, examples, exercises, and there may be different types of exercises as well. So we're gonna take a look at those different pieces today. In the Python course, we have a bunch of modules, students are learning a lot of content. So they're gonna start with a, um, a really fun, engaging way to get students um, excited about Python with um, Turtle, Tracy the Turtle. So this is a graphics um, introduction to Python. So students are gonna be drawing pictures using this little turtle that they can command around the screen and they're gonna learn a lot of those basic um, computer science topics like loops and if else statements and even functions and parameters, variables, all of those things, they're gonna get a, an easy intro to all of those um, foundational topics in this module. And then they're gonna switch over in that third module, basic Python and console interaction is when they're first gonna switch over and now be coding using our actual Python code. So though Tracy the turtle uses Python, it's in a more, um, more engaging way. And then students are now going into like console Python where they are going to use those concepts that they learned with Tracy and apply them in different ways. So they're gonna learn a deeper understanding of conditionals and loops and functions. And then they're gonna learn a lot more about strings and how they can manipulate text and then they're gonna learn some data structures and use um, dictionaries and lists. And then they do a final project where they make a guess the word game. So these are the main um, modules in our Python course, but we also have a lot of supplemental information and activities. So if you go through the Tracy content with your students and your students are like, we want more Tracy, you're probably going to hear that. <laughs> um, we have a whole advanced Tracy challenges module there. This is a really good way for students who are working ahead or students who need an extra challenge. Um, you can assign this, these challenges or this module to them. Um, we also have a different Python graphics module. We have information on classes and objects, which is a higher level concept if you want to teach your students that in Python. And we have some additional things there as well um, that you can take a look at in supplemental and assign to your students. So we are going to dive into a sample lesson today. And the first lesson that we're going to go through is Intro to Python with Tracy the Turtle. So this is the first lesson in that Tracy the Turtle uh, module. So you're going to get to see what is Tracy? How are students going to get information? And how are they going to be completing exercises and learning these concepts on CodeHS? So once we dive into this lesson, I want to um, preface this by saying the goal of our lesson today is though you probably are going to learn some information about how to, um, how to, to write programs with Tracy, the goal is for us to 
um, be seeing how the content on Code HS can be used with your students. How can you use the layout of Code HS and the resources that are provided with your students to get them engaged? So um, I am going to go through this lesson as the teacher, and you are going to be the students. And at the end, we're going to debrief and take a look behind the scenes. Why did I make those decisions? And how? what are other decisions that you could make as you're teaching this with your students? So let's dive in. All right. So hello, class. Um, today, we are going to get started programming with our Tracy the Turtle, which is um, a way we're going to write um, programs in Python. But I want to get us to first take a look, take a step back. So I want you to tell me in the chat, if you can go and write, what is a computer? How would you define a computer? So I want you to think a, for a second and write this into the chat. Awesome, I'm getting some great answers here. Let's take another 15 seconds to get an answer into the chat. What is a computer? All right, I like these answers. We're getting a lot of different pieces here. A machine that follows a set of instructions exactly. Input, output, storage, processing, processing information, manipulating data, thinking or decision making. Awesome. So now with that in mind, think, keep your definition of what a computer is in mind. Now I want you to tell me if you agree or disagree with this statement. A dog is a computer. So you can do this in one of, uh, in a few ways. You can either write it in the chat you can go to your um, reactions, I think is the new term for, for Zoom. Um, and there might be a yes or a no. You can write yes, you can do a thumbs up, you can um, do a check. Awesome, so I'm seeing lots of different ways. All right. So I'm getting a lot of different answers here. I like that. All right. So now thinking if you said yes or no, let's see if we have any brave people who want to tell me why they chose their answer. So we have a lot of people who said yes, a lot of people who said no. Is anyone brave enough? Raise your hand and I'll call on you and then you can unmute to let us know why do you think either a dog is or is not a computer? Vanessa, I feel like that's exactly the answer I, I would get from a student. <laughs> if the computer is named dog. <laughs> all right, so yeah, you can also write your why in the chat. Awesome, Geoff? It's Jeff. Jeff yeah, yeah it's, sorry. it's Jeff. So <laughs> I'd say because a dog follows instructions most of the time. So that's a yes or a no? That's a yes. A yes. Okay. So the dog follows instructions most of the time. So Jeff says yes. What about anyone who said no? I said no because. A dog is a dog, just like a human is a human. <laughs> yes, it does process and input, take information, but at the same time, it's still a dog, so. Okay, and so if it's taking in information, but what is it, what do you mean by, but it's still a dog? Like, how does that make it different from a computer then? I mean, it's not like, a computer is not a living being, in other words, the dog is alive. And um Okay. It does process and do all the things that a computer does, but at the same time, um the dog is not necessarily, you know, something that you can take apart, put that together and it work again, kind of type scenario. <laughs> so 
I, let's hope not. <laughs> I hope we're not taking apart our dogs. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of answers. Awesome. So, yeah, I I like um we got an answer in the chat too. A dog will not always give the same output for a certain input. That's a perfect way to say that. I love that. So I have a little puppy right now. And I will tell you, I can tell him sit. Sometimes he'll sit, sometimes he won't. So there are a lot of ways that yes, I can try to train him so that every time that I tell him one command, he will do that same thing. And there are some dogs that are better than that, better at that than others, right? Like seeing eye dogs, things like that. But my dog is not there yet. I can tell you that. <laughs> so um, a computer, we know if we give the same input, a computer will give the same output, right? The computer must follow the commands that we're giving as long as we're giving them in the right way. A dog still has that option to make that choice, right? A computer doesn't have um, the ability to say, oh, I don't really want to do that command right now. Even though sometimes I feel that way with my Alexa. <laughs> I'm like, can you play this song? And she's just like, eh, I'll think about it. <laughs> All right. So keeping that in mind, we are going to learn about um, not a dog, but a turtle who's going to help us learn Python. So our turtle is named Tracy. And Tracy is going to be a turtle that will follow the commands we give her when we write them in this language called Python. So if I told my dog, sit is the word when I want his butt to sit on the ground, and then I say a different word, He's going to say, well, I don't know that word. I only know the word sit. So that's the same as Tracy. She knows some commands, but we have to make sure that we tell them to her in the language she understands. And that language is called Python. So when we want Tracy to move forward, we have to write the command in this exact way in order for her to understand it. We have to write the word forward and then a distance number inside parentheses. And this will move Tracy forward that amount. So if I say forward 100, Tracy will move forward 100 pixels. And you'll see that right now, Tracy is leaving a line behind her, a trail. So we get to see where she started and where she ended. And we will learn as we go through this um, unit together, we will learn other ways that we can um, change that line behind her, that trail. We have another command that we're gonna learn today. And that is the circle command. So if we want Tracy to move in a circle, we write the word circle all in lowercase. And then inside parentheses next to it, we write the radius of the circle. And this will tell Tracy to draw that circle at that specific size. So if we say circle 50, the circle Tracy draws will have a radius of 50. And we want to remember that the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the outer edge. So if we give 50, can anyone tell me in the chat, what is the diameter of this circle that Tracy drew? Let's practice our math words here. We can write it in the chat. Awesome. So if the radius is 50, the diameter is the distance all across the circle from one end all the way to the other end. So that's gonna be double. So that is gonna be 100. Awesome. All right, so we learned two commands today forward and circle. And we need to make sure that when we give these commands to Tracy, we give them to her in this exact same way. We have to make sure the words are lowercase and we put our values inside parentheses. So let's practice with these commands now in CodeHS. I'm gonna switch over to our um, class today and we are gonna go into our first example. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna write a code together. And you're gonna see on the left-hand side, you all can just watch for now. You guys are gonna be able to hop into the course in just a bit. But for now, we're gonna write this code together. We want Tracy to draw this slinky. So she's gonna draw a bunch of circles and they are going to have a radius of 35. So let's first just try to make her draw a circle with a radius of 35. Well, when I click run code, I get an error. Why am I getting an error? What am I, what did I mess up? What do I have to change here? 
Why isn't she doing a circle? Awesome. Parentheses, thank you. So I need to put my 35 inside parentheses or she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Let's try that now. So here's Tracy and here she goes. She draws my first circle, perfect. Now I want her to draw more circles, right? I want her to draw five circles. So I'm just gonna write circle 35. And now if I run this, she draws a circle, but then she just draws the same circle, right? It doesn't, I don't even know that she did it twice because she did it right on top. So I have to move forward, awesome, in between. And I'm gonna move forward 20 pixels in between. So now if I draw a circle, then I move forward before I draw the second circle, now I have my slinky. I have the first two rings of my slinky. So all I want to do here is I want to do the, these two um, commands five times. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them five times. And now when I click run code, Tracy will do five circles in a row. And I can see that she draws my slinky and we have those spaces between my rings. And I, I saw that I need to make sure I write the commands in the right way. Now, what if I forget what the word is to make her move forward? Like maybe I thought it was straight and it's not working. Well, over here we have the docs. So I can click on docs. Awesome. Diana, you are like a Code HS pro over here. So in my docs tab, I have all information about those commands. And so I can see some commands we learned forward and circle, and even some commands we haven't learned yet. As we go through our, our um, year, we're gonna learn all these commands. But this is a really helpful place to go if you forget what those commands are or how you have to write them. Awesome. All right, so we are going to hop back over here. And I want you to try a Tracy exercise on your own. So we are going to go through the stretch slinky exercise and I'm gonna, it's gonna take a long time to present and then I'm just gonna zoom back right back out. But we are gonna go into that intro to Trace, Python with Tracy um, you, uh, lesson and we're gonna go into the stretch slinky exercise. So I'm gonna show you where that is. You can also find it on your workbook. But if you go, to our demo course, you'll see this sun right at the top, Summer PD 2021. And our first lesson right here is right here, Intro to Python with Tracy the Turtle. And we are skipping some of these parts and we're going right into 2.1.4 Stretch Slinky. So this is the um, activity that I want you to try on your own for just a few minutes, maybe about two minutes, I'm gonna let you go in and, and take a look. If you can't um, finish it, that's okay. Just take a look at that activity.
All right. Hopefully you had a little bit of time to find that exercise. Um, we just have a lot to cover today. So I want to move on, but you can always go back to finish that exercise if you need more time. We are going to move on to a really, really cool tool that I want you guys to be able to try out together. So this is our collaborate tool. So you should be able to um, see in your um, course on CodeHS, the next tool you can, if you're in the exercise stretch slinky, you can just click continue. Um, or if you go back to the main screen, you can find this collaborate notes section right in your course. So I'm gonna bring that over and just show you what that looks like, how you can find that. So our, it's right here, our collaborate squish slinky, and it's just a, a note section. And stretch slinky, if we're in this assignment, if you were taking a look at our exercise here, sorry, I should have had this up and loaded because my Zoom is going a little crazy. So you can click submit and continue. And even if you haven't finished it, um, it will tell you you didn't finish, but you can continue anyway. And you'll be able to go to that next circle on your screen, squished slinky. So there are a lot of crazy links here, um, but I want you to check out this collaborate tool. So we are gonna go into breakout rooms and I want you to do some um, group programming where you are going to try to complete this activity. So we want Tracy to draw three circles, each with a diameter of 100 pixels. And the center circle here should touch the other two at their center. So this center one should be intersecting the other two circles right at the center of those circles. So I want you with your group to figure out how can you make that happen? So how this is gonna work, I'm going to show you, I will hop into this first collaborate link. And when we are in collaborate, oh no. Okay, hopefully it, it will still work. Um, when we are in collaborate, you'll see, you can see up here that Jan is in here with me. I think she hopped into that, that link, awesome. So you can see who is in, the, in this um, room and then we can both be writing commands together, right? We can um, write whatever we want here, forward, right? And I can see where everyone else is typing. You'll be able to see um, what everyone is um, adding to this, this activity so that you can be writing code together and you can run it and you can use comments to each other, remember, um, uh, that we learned, you can use a um, hash mark to write a comment. Here's a comment, right? Maybe you want to tell your um, your group what should we do next. Um, you are going to be in a breakout room with your group, so you are going to be able to talk to them that way. But this is a really um, there's a lot of different ways for you to communicate with each other in our collaborate groups. So I am going to close that up. Um, hopefully you all were able to get to this screen and we're going to open eight breakout rooms and you are going to be able to click on the link that matches your room and work with your group to um, get this, this exercise done. So let me just get those groups ready to go. Awesome. I am gonna create our rooms. And just a note, you are going to have to click join when a pop-up comes up so that you can head into your breakout room. We'll be in these rooms for about five minutes. Um, and I will send a little message to let you know that we're gonna come back. All right, I'm opening our rooms now.
All right, everyone, I am closing our breakout room. So we will get going in about 40 more seconds. I do believe I left too soon. It invited me to leave. So I left. <laughs> That's that's okay. We got 30 more seconds. So I'm just waiting for everyone else to join. Two of us talked, but I thought I thought we were the only ones in there. I didn't see the other person in there. So I'm sure there was more more than two. Yeah, I'm uh, sure you have felt that way in your classroom too. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it was really good because uh we did this collaboration thing where we we wrote some code, then we ran it, and we said, oh, not quite there. Then we tried it again, and then after about three tries, we finally got it uh, working. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and it's really awesome because on my end, as the teacher, I can see everyone's code, and I would be able to give feedback or add comments or um, you know, encourage students that way. Um, and I saw some awesome things. I saw people playing around with loops and different Tracy commands, had uh -huh. some Python pros in there. So awesome, awesome job, guys. Okay. All right. So hopefully you were able to check out how awesome those features are on that Collaborate tool so we can um, write some code together. And now I want us to um, do a, a little um, refresher on our circles. We're going to be using so many circles in right. our Tracy exercises. So we are going to um, hand, um, head over to this, this Google Drive link. This is a folder where we're going to be able to have, um, have a worksheet to look through some Tracy commands and how we can um, put our knowledge of circles together with Tracy. So um, I just want you to be able to take a, a few minutes to, to take a look at this. Um, and so if we head over to this, this um, link, which we're gonna drop in the chat, and I see um, we're talking about some comments. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, we have um, we have some different ways to make multi-line and single line inline comments. So awesome. And so this is another benefit of being in this um, workshop together with other teachers. So when you go into your breakout room, I do want you to take a, a quick look at these handouts. And so your group number is gonna um, tell you which handout you can, can open up. And I'm gonna put you in a, a breakout room with other people so that you are able to chat with some teachers you might not have been able to connect with before. Um, take a look at this handout and, and see how this could be used in your classroom. Um, but then you also are going to have that time to chat with your other teachers. How have they used these types of things in their classroom? Um, and you know what are some of those Python um, tips that they have for you? So yeah, that link is here. And awesome there, the link is in the chat as well. So I'm gonna open some breakout rooms and I'm gonna switch them up so that you are with some other people. And we're gonna have just about five minutes again in these breakout rooms. So um, take a look at that handout. You can um, work through some of it if you want or talk to some, some teachers in there and see what are some tips and ways that you could use this in your classroom. So I'm going to open those rooms now and you'll just have to click the pop up to head in there. All right.
Hi, Julia. Hello. Are, are we uh, just going into this site here to get ready? Uh, yep. So, so do you have the workbook open? Uh, the uh, group group uh, one through 10 circles. So yeah, that's the handout that we're working on. Um, but we are, I can send in the chat. This, this started at 11, doesn't it? Um, depends on what time zone you're in. <laughs> um, we're about an hour in. Oh, shoot. So um, we okay. just, we're recording it. So you're going to have all of that information. OK, yeah, that's my problem then. I guess I'm on mountain time. So Julia, we just finished our no problem. Group our group one handout it, were, were we finished with yep. our group one and we come back to these we leave the leave the chat i mean leave the breakout room and come yep, back so i was okay i just want to make sure we did the right thing yep, we i was giving do, some some time okay just want to make yeah sure i was giving some time to, for handout. you to chat but i'm gonna bring everyone back now All right, I see some people joining back. We're just going to wait for those breakout rooms to close up in about 40 more seconds. All right, we got 10 more seconds for our breakout rooms to close up. I see lots of people joining us back here. Awesome. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to chat with your group to take a look at this handout, which is included in um, your resources on CodeHS. Um, and to chat with your group about um, you know, any tips or, or info that they have for how they have taught Python if they have or any questions you had. Um, it definitely is really helpful to get information from other teachers in similar scenarios. So just to finish up this, um, this lesson, I would have our exit ticket today be for you to go in and and complete this check for understanding this short quiz about what we learned today. And I could use that um, to know who was really understanding the information today and who I might have to check in with next class. Um, but I'm not going to have us do that for the sake of time right now. But I want us to now just take a, a step back and see what were those choices that I made as the teacher teaching this lesson today. So. Um, on CodeHS, every lesson that we have for um, that will teach new content has a video. So there's a video that you can access on CodeHS that your students have access to. Um, and there are a bunch of different ways that you can use that video in your classroom based on what type of um, lesson you want to teach. So the highlighted in blue is the option that I used for this lesson, which is just to teach through the slides on my own. So I wanted to be able to um, keep everyone engaged, to, to maybe put my own spin on that or include information um, that is specific to my students. So um, I just taught through the slides and there are a lot of teachers on CodeHS that do this option. You can also have your students individually watch the video. So if you might have, be having a, a totally self-paced classroom, and then students can just continue through the material as they want. So they can just watch those, um, those videos as they get to them. Or you can flip your classroom and have your students watch the video before they come to class um, so that they have that information. And then you can just do a quick recap 
Um, you can also know which students watched, which students didn't. So there's a, a easy ways for, for you to keep track of who um, is prepared. Or you could watch the video all together as a class and you can pause it at different times, check in with your students, um, make sure that they're all understanding that content. So those are some options that you have with that video portion. Then we looked at an example and that was our slinky example. So I started, bl I blanked out the editor. I just deleted the code in there. And we wrote that example together with, with um, I wrote it with you as the students. So I could make some errors intentionally, ask you to help me debug the code. Um, I could have um, you see, you know, how my, my thought process was. So this is just a very beginning lesson, but as we get into harder or more, um, more challenging activities, you might want students to think through these things and to see your thought process as you're going through this activity. Um, you could also, which we're gonna see in a little bit after our break, um, go through those examples um, in groups or individually as the, the students could go through those um, with a worksheet and they could be told to change different things so that they have to see how those alterations to the code will affect um, the, the, the exercise and how it actually runs. Or you could explore those examples as a class. I could put the full example up. A lot of teachers, a really cool idea that I like, um, a lot of teachers will have the example code but will intentionally put some bugs into the code before they get to it with their students and they'll put it on the board and then say okay let's debug this together why isn't it working what do we have to change what do we have to fix and debugging is such an important skill for for students to learn and it's really important for them to know that it's natural and it's going to happen and it's okay because a lot of students are told you need to get the answer right the first time and that's just not the case with programming, right? You need to make some mistakes to learn from them and, and see what happens so you can test and, and see what you need to do in order to make um, the code be successful. So I really like that debugging as a way to um, show that everyone, you know, this is these are gonna be some mistakes we're gonna make and how can we find them and fix them? What are some of those tools we're gonna use? Then for the exercises, we both did some exercise individually and we had them, we actually used pair programming, but it was like group pair programming because you guys were working in small groups on that collaborate using the collaborate tool. Um, so there's some options there when you're going through the exercises. And then to open or close the activity, um, we have some discussion questions. At the beginning, we talked about what is a computer. We framed our lesson using that and tried to um, get some information before we started our lesson. And then as the exit ticket, I would use that short video quiz to give me some information about what I need to do uh, tomorrow, right? And I also use that handout in class. I could use that as a homework activity. Um, it's a really good way. Those handouts are awesome to get students away from the computer, get their eyes off the screen, and still having to use those um, commands and, and information that they learned but in a different way. So there are a lot of different things that you have on CodeHS available to you. So before we hop into this next lesson, I want us to be able to take a little, um, a little break. Oh, I see, sorry, I was ignoring my chat for a second. Um, James, did you have a question? Yeah, I was, just, I was just wondering how much of these materials are part of, if we're just talking brass tacks, how many of these materials are available per pro subscription, for lack of a better term, and how much of this stuff, because I can tell you're a wonderful teacher, you're just creating and sharing, sharing with us directly. Yep, perfect. Uh, so um, on CodeHS, we have handouts, like that handout that I used with you. Um, that's an example of a handout. And we also have like the answer keys that go with all of those. Um, lesson plans, which have all information. I'm gonna show you one of those in a bit. Um, and problem guides, which will help you give you some FAQs. So all of those resources, every free teacher gets the first five lessons free. So you'll get the first five lesson plans, all the information, all the handouts for those first five lessons. And this one is in the first five lessons. So that one would be free to you. 
pro teachers then get all of that for the rest of the, the content. But um, one way that a lot of free teachers, so when I, when I was teaching um, engineering, I, this is how I found out about CodeHS, and I was a totally free teacher. I didn't even know there was a pro option at that point. It was years ago. Um, but you can use that, those first lesson plans as like a skeleton or a template, get some information and some ideas, and then use those to create the lesson plans for the rest of the, the course. Those handouts are really, really helpful. Um, the CodeHS team has developed a lot of those. So obviously if you're on pro, like I highly recommend using those, but it doesn't mean that you aren't able to create those yourself as a free teacher um, as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, and, and sorry, I got one more real quick, if that's all right. I, I guess to uh, sure. the balance between pointing the kids in the direction of, you know, like uh, paired programming or just following through the systems and doing it a module at a time and when to intervene as a teacher, it it's still sometimes unclear because we, we use this, it's not exactly the same, but a similar system right now. And uh, it's tricky because it, it, what's wonderful about these kinds of environments is they are somewhat self-paced and sometimes putting yourself into it can slow things down, right? So I guess I'm looking yeah. for more information on that, like how to pace your intervention, if that makes any sense when you're moving forward? That's a great question. And, and it's something that a lot of teachers ask us about. Um, a lot of teachers, when they first, uh, especially teachers who are told you have to teach computer science, they're not as comfortable with it. They find CodeHS, they're like, I'm glad, like, I don't, I, you know, I'm just gonna let my kids do this. And they go fully self-paced. And I would say in general, that's not the best way to go. So fully self-paced is, students just accessing materials whenever they want, you're very, very quickly gonna get students at so many different levels and it's gonna be hard for you to have those interventions with students when they need them. Um, I think a, a much better um, way to, to plan your, your school day um, is somewhat self-paced, but through like modules or through, you know, have like checkpoints um, because being able to, check in with the group as a whole and say, okay, let's just double check. Like at this point, everyone should have gotten to variables, right? The next lesson we're gonna do. Um, how, you know, let's do some questions together. Let's double check that everyone's on the same page. Um, but I really like that self-paced um, in, you know, at some, some points, um, because I think if you are forcing every student to go at the same level, um, some students are gonna just go so quick, finish their material and they might get you know, less engaged because they're not as challenged. You might also still have some students who are struggling and you might then not have enough time to intervene with the students that actually need it. So my whole, I mean, this is something that teachers struggle with all the time, right? Differentiation and how do we make sure that we are meeting students where they are and giving them what they need. It, more advanced students might not need that one-on-one -on -one time the way that those students who are struggling will. And allowing for somewhat of a self-paced environment, whether it's just for, if you have a block schedule, maybe it's for, you know, one hour of the time is gonna be self-paced and maybe the, the beginning 15, 30 minutes and the ending 15, 30 minutes will be all coming back together and, and double checking where we are, or maybe, Monday and Friday are, we're all following together, but Tuesday through Thursday, you can work through the lessons on your own. So there are so many different options. And we also, like I see Mark there, um, bonus exercises. So we have so much supplemental, um, supplemental material, extra challenges, extra lessons, extra um, practice problems. So we're gonna look through a lot of those tools um, later and we have so many of them. So if you're interested in getting more info, um, right into the parking lot. We can give you a lot of links there. Um, but we have a lot of things both to help struggling students and to challenge um, higher achieving students. So I know that that's hard. I can't give one answer on, you know, this exactly how to make it work with your students because everyone's different. But um, I highly suggest some sort of self-paced time, but in a larger structure of, check in so that you can know that you know students are getting the information that they need when they need it and you still have time available to check in with the ones 
that um, may need some more one-on-one -on -one support. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so um, with that, we're gonna take um, just maybe a three minute break. I know I wanted to give you five, but I think this information is really helpful. So thank you, James, for asking those questions. Um, so I'm gonna give you a three minute break. We're gonna come back at um, 10 after the hour and we're gonna finish, um, or we're gonna take a, another look at a sample lesson and, and look through some more of those tools. So go take a, take a screen break, get some water, stretch your legs, and I'll see you back in about three minutes. All right, everyone. Awesome. Hopefully you had a little bit of a, a break from your screen. Um, before we hop into our next really quick lesson, I just wanted to show you where you could, um, what information you can see on our um, lesson plan. So like, how did I come up with this lesson? Um, I didn't have to go through all of the um, information from scratch and, and start from zero. Um, like I said, we have lesson plans available on Code HS. So um, when Ebony goes through tools, she'll show you how to find these resources. Um, but once we get into our lesson plan, you're going to have a lot of information. You're going to have what are we doing, 
quick links to all of our activities and you'll see some of the options are pro features um, but for these first five lesson plans you'll get all of this information solution references so any of our exercises or activities um, or quizzes you're going to get those answers whether you are free or pro for the entire all of our curriculum um, we know that you need to know what the answer is in order to teach it right so um, your solution references are always going to be free problem guides are um, a step up from solution references so those will give you um, some more information about why we're doing this exercise what is the goal and then some um, frequently asked questions so where are um, common mistakes that students are going to make and how can you help um, alleviate those so that's that problem guide so i i definitely suggest you take a look at that um, again you get those all for the first five lessons um, vocab we have what are some of our our um, different vocab or commands that we're going to learn in this lesson we have handouts so that circles handout the one that i gave to you in the um, google drive is linked right here as well as the teacher answer key so you can see that um, those answers as well and again you can download those handouts and put them into your own google drive and assign them that way um, make changes there ask additional questions any of that you can always um, make a make a copy of those activities and then make them your own and then we have planning notes so some things that you'll have to keep in mind before you get started on your lesson, then this is where it's really, really helpful. And we were talking a little bit, I saw some um, info, some questions about like the timing of different lessons. So we have timestamps here that are how long these different parts of the lesson we expect, how long they'll take. Um, how, what is a way that you could open your class some activities to complete throughout the, the class time, and then how do you close your class? We have some information, like what should students know before this, right? They need to know what parentheses are and how they can find them on the keyboard before they can um, add that in there. Um, if you're teaching this with high school students, shouldn't be too much of an issue, but we have a lot of people teaching this with um, middle school students as well. You have your slides right here, and then these discussion questions. So um these are this is gave me a, a start of how we were going to get our class started today um so we have our beginning of class and end of class discussion questions and then at the bottom there's a whole bunch of standards so we have our um all of our content linked to a lot of standards so if you have never checked that out all the different standards um views that we have on code hs and you need to you need to you know you have a specific um state course that you have to match to or something we have a lot of information on standards so if you want more info on that ask that in the parking lot as well we can give you that information all right okay so that is our lesson plan for the one that we went through today that first lesson we're gonna hop over where is my where are we okay okay so i'm gonna bring that out and we are going to go through, we're not going to have you um, go through the lesson like we did with Tracy, um, but we are going to look at variables and types. So I want you to think, um, think through like some different options. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how I would work through this lesson and how it would be different. Some of those changes that I would make um, from less, the first lesson we did. So this is going to be a, um, after Tracy, we hop into basic Python. So this is when students, they learned about how to print different text in Python, and now they're going to be learning about variables. And they already learned a little bit about variables in Tracy, but now they're learning about types. They're getting deeper into that information. So I would, for this one, maybe have a flipped classroom. So I would have them watch the video and take the quiz before they even came to class. And I can check if they watch the video, and then I can check um, if they did the quiz and what they scored, right? So I know before my kids even come into my classroom, how much they understood about that information that was in the video. So then I know exactly how much time I have to spend and what concepts I have to spend time on reviewing when they come into class. And we're gonna um, see a really easy way to communicate with your students. If I, you know, 
I say this is due for homework at Tuesday at you know noon and it's Tuesday at 8 a.m. and I know they have um, they haven't watched the video. I can send them a quick little um, message and say, hey, don't forget about our homework for today. Um, and our videos are most of the videos are five minutes or less. So it really should be a quick homework assignment that they can get some good at content that you then um, can just spend time in your classroom going over the concepts instead of wasting time, you know, from scratch. After that, maybe I would do some sort of opener to review those variables. So I, I know my students already watched that video. I'm going to give them some variables and say, tell me if this is um, a variable that a variable name that would be acceptable to use, right? And we could discuss why would this number of apples variable name work or not work? What about four circles or age, right? So we could go through some of these options together and, and have that discussion, which would be reviewing what was in that video. Then I would have students go through these examples in small groups. So I'm going to open this um, Google Drive folder to show you. Um, in the last scenario, we used our, our handout on circles as a way to review um, information about circles so that I knew students were really comfortable with the words diameter and radius and how how those were going to go together. For this, um, this situation, this is when students are going through those example um, exercises by themselves uh, in, in groups like I as a teacher, I haven't gone through those with them. I'm telling them go into the examples and now with your group, follow the directions in this worksheet so that you can make changes to our exercise and see what happens. So this is more exploratory. And I really like this, having students learn concepts this way rather than me just telling them, this is what this command does, right? Have them play around and see a lot of what programming is, is making mistakes and seeing, okay, well, what, what does happen when I enter this um, line of code? What's going to change and why is it changing? So having students explore a little bit on their own, but maybe in, in groups before as a class, we all go together and, and revisit those, um, those topics. So this is um, a worksheet that I just quickly made from the lesson plan. So all of these changes were already on the lesson plan of options for students. Um, so all I did was just take those from the lesson plan and copy and paste them into a worksheet so that students would have to go through each of those changes and write what actually happened and make hypothesis, um, make a hypothesis and then check, was that right? Um, and that's a lot of what I want them to get as they're learning these different um, concepts in programming. So I would have them go through those examples and then have them complete the exercises. And maybe I want some students to work individually. Maybe I want some to pair program um, physically in person. We have you know, one person typing, one person um, telling the other one what they think um, we need to do and then switching roles. We could have them use collaborate. There's a lot of different options here for how they could go through those exercises. And then to close, bring everyone back. So maybe they're self-paced in the, in the middle and then bringing everyone back to look again at those different um, pieces that we learned that I know at this point in the lesson, they need to understand. And we can have that, that ending end of class discussion there. So, we went through a little bit of what these alterations were. And um, I just want to show you quickly. Um, actually, yeah, we're good. Let's, I think we're going to hop into our tools now. Um, does anyone have any last questions about those lessons or the information that I went through? I'm going to take a look at the parking lot. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked there, but if you have any questions or you want more info, that's a really, really great place to go and I can um, add some answers in there as well. But I want you guys to have some time to look at these teacher tools and more on how you can find those resources in on CodeHS. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it over to Ebony so she can give us some info on our teacher tools. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Awesome. 
Awesome. Hi, everyone. Give me one second. Okay. So we are going to hop into the teacher tools and resources that we have here at CodeHS. And in this presentation, we have lots of slides where, where we describe these, but um, what I'm going to do is just hop into the live site and show them to you that way. Um, and you guys are going to receive a copy of the slide so you can go back and reference this if you would like to. So when you first sign into CodeHS as a teacher, you are going to see your teacher page. Um, and this is what it looks like. It has a list of your current and past sections. Um, you can also switch to your student page here in the, on the left side. So if you are enrolled in a course, such as today you're enrolled in the PD course, you would see that in your student page. But from your teacher page, you see a list of your sections. And the first tip I wanna give is, a, is kind of a difference between courses and sections here at CodeHS. Um, and so courses at CodeHS is sort of the assignments that your students are gonna do. And sections, we look at them as different class periods. So for example, here I have multiple sections, both doing the same exact intro to JavaScript course. Um, okay, so when you click into your section, um, I have these pages preloaded just for Zoom's purpose. Uh, but when you click into your section, you are going to get your roster page. And um, this is where you'll see a list of your students, you're able to manage their accounts, meaning change their passwords, change their emails. Um, and we also have lots of tools for this page. Um, so to get students to join your section, you can either invite them via email or you can share a join link with them um, like we did previously today. So students will just need this link and then this join code um, to be able to join your section. And if you forget what the join code is, you can, sorry, the class code, um, you can see that here or also on your sections page as well. Um, the next uh, really cool tool that we have here on our roster page is the announcements tool. And um, announcements is a cool way, I think Julia quickly mentioned it, but it's a cool way to send an announcement here on CodeHS. Yes, you can communicate via email with students, um, but any announcement that you send will automatically um, send a notifications to students as soon as they log into CodeHS. Um, and you can send different announcements to your different sections here um, on CodeHS. And you can have a, a, a history of all the announcements that you have sent. The next um, tool we have that is very, very helpful um, because CodeHS is, is virtual. So especially when you're not teaching face-to-face, -face, um, our attendance tool is very helpful for you to keep track of what students are um, doing. So you can view attendance um, on a day-by-day -day basis or weekly. So in your day view, you're able to see the student information and you can see whether or not they're present. And we mark students as present if they have done any work on CodeHS, meaning if they've clicked around, if they've watched a video, if they've submitted work, they will be marked as present. And you can see the first time they were active, um, the most recent activity, and the total time they've spent that day on CodeHS. And if you click into weekly attendance, you can just see this information on a, on a weekly basis. So um, I know a lot of teachers view weekly, and then if they see an issue um, or if they wanna get more information, they'll go back to the daily to do more research there. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm gonna be talking kind of quickly through all the tools just because there's so many. Um, so if you do have questions, please put them in the parking lot doc document and we'll be sure to get you a link um, to our knowledge based articles for that. So we are back to our roster page. Um, and the last tool from this page I would like to show you is um, our conversations. So our conversations is just a way for you to chat with students here on CodeHS. So similar to our announcements, um, where, whenever you're chatting with a student, they will get a notification as soon as they log into CodeHS. And this conversation is just general code HS, it's not linked to a specific assignment. And later I'll show you um, a way that you can have a conversation with a student that is linked to a specific assignment. Okay, I'm trying to keep track of the chat to make sure there are no questions. All right, so our next tool we're gonna hop into is um, kind of how we work on 
um, customizing your course. And so the course customization tools can be found under course settings. And um, we are gonna go to the due date and access control page. Um, and I like this page because it has due dates, access controls, and the is assigned settings all in one page, but you can also view these separately as well. Um, and so the first one we're gonna talk about is access controls. So the default access um, setting for CodeHS um, courses is available. And that just means students will be able to see the activities and also um, interact with them and, and submit them. If you lock an assignment, students will be able to see the assignment name, um, but they will not be able to access them. They'll actually see a little locked icon. So, um, so this is an example of a student's page. Um, I'm actually viewing this as a student. So I locked our first module here. So as a student, I will still be able to see it, but you can see these little locked icons, meaning that I will not be able to access it. Oops, sorry, one second. Okay, so those are our access controls. Um, you can also schedule assignments here on CodeHS. So that means that the assignment will be locked until your scheduled date. So you can enter a start time, an end time, or either or, depending on what you need for your class. So um, for example, if you have an exam that you only want students to have access to for a certain amount of time, you can use this scheduled option. Um, or if you have a due date and you want students to have access to an assignment up until that time, you can just enter an end time here. You can also do that manually if you just keep it as locked and then come back and make it available um, as needed. The next tool from this page is our due date. Um, and this is just a due date where students will see this on all of their assignments and also on their student page when they log in. Um, and we also have an option with our grade book where you can mark assignments that are turned in late as zero. Um, or you can also have this collaborate with your access controls. So maybe you have a due date and make the assignment not available after that due date. And the last tool on this page is the is assigned settings. And so the difference between is assigned and access controls is like I showed you with access controls, students will still be able to see the activity name. They just won't have access to it. Whereas with is assigned settings, if you make this um, no, students will not see it at all. Um, so you would use this maybe if you've had this section previously and you know that they've already done the Carol challenges, so you don't want to see them, you don't want them to see it at all, you would mark this as no. And up here at the top, you see an option to change the section. Um, so like I previously said, this course has multiple sections taking it. So you can set these controls based on sections, or you can do them for all sections taking this course. Um, and additionally, if you wanted to um, change these settings based on a specific student, you can do that here as well. Um, so for example, if one student needs extra time, you would click their name and then um, you'll bring up a page that has looks similar to this and you can um, control those settings for them. And you can do this on the module level, and you can even break it down to um, specific assignments as well. Okay, we're gonna keep track. Okay, so our next tool that we're gonna go over is our progress view. And so we have many different progress views you can um, see. So you can view the progress by assignment, by lesson, um, by module, and we also have quiz scores progress view, which is where you'll see a quiz breakdown um, where you kind of get a table seeing which questions most students got incorrect, um, things of that nature. And we also have a time tracking feature, um, which is another way for you to see how long students have taken to complete an assignment. So we're gonna view the assignment progress. And when you click that, you'll get this page, which kind of looks like a heat map. Um, and on every page you'll, have these colors, you also have a key at the top. Um, so a gray circle means that the assignment has not been opened. Um, yellow means it's been opened or started. Green means that the student has submitted it. 
pink means that um, the student submitted the, the assignment, but maybe you went back and marked it as still needs work. Um, and so both you and the student will see the assignment as pink. The purple means that it's been submitted um, after you've marked it as needs more work. And then the teal means that it's been um, finalized and graded. Um, and if you ever wanted to, from this progress page, if you wanted to click the student's name, you'll get taken to a list of their full assignments um, and you can view their progress that way as well. The next tool we have um, is the gradebook. And so a gradebook, I know many teachers kind of use this as a progress view as well, since um, you do still have the colors um, kind of heat map here as well. Um, but here you also have the option to directly change student grades um, and also change the total possible points for a specific assignment. So if you click this edit in the top left, um, you'll be able to change students' grades and then also um, the total possible points here. And our gradebook is very, um, uh, you can, sorry, um, you're able to configure it to be exactly what you want. Um, so if you click configure here, you are able, sorry, so you made it a little bit slow. Um, you're able to choose what you would like to include. So for example, maybe you don't want students to get points for videos. Um, you could uncheck this and students will still have to complete the videos, but that will not be um, computed in their grade. You also have the option, if you are using due dates, you have the option to flag them. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's a setting um, if you want to mark all late assignments as zero, you can do that here. And you can also enable weighted grading from this page as well. And the gradebook, um, you can view this by module like I am right now, um, or you can also view all modules and all lessons at the same time. So if you wanted to um, go further into an assignment. So this is the grade book. This is all of the assignments at once. If you wanted to view um, the progress or grades for a specific assignment, you can just click the assignment name at the top of the grade book. Um, and once you click that, you'll be taken to a breakdown of just the specific assignment. So from this page, you can kind of grade in bulk. So if you wanted to or give all these students full credit for these assignments, give them all zeros for whatever reason, um, or you can also reset um, this assignment for all of the students in your section as well. Um, and this has a little bit more information. So you'll be able to see the started time and when it was submitted. Um, my data looks a little bit wonky because this is a, a demo section. So these are fake students with fake data, but your students will have a start time, uh, submission time, and a total amount of time spent on the assignment. Here, you can change the status of the assignment and you can also change the grade from this page as well. Also from this page, you have the option to fast grade. And so if you click fast grade from this grading page, you'll be taken to a page where you're able to quickly go through the submissions for this assignment only. So you'll be able to grade all of the submissions um, for this assignment. There's another way for you to fast grade, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, if you return to your roster page or teacher page, um, if you click review in this top navigation or um, code review on the left navigation, you will be taken to this page. Um, so on this page, you have the option right here to fast grade, and this will allow you to go through assignment submissions um, chronologically. So if you choose um, fast grade from this view, um, you'll be grading multiple different assignments just depending on when students have turned them in. And you are able to filter them by assignment or by student. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if you click into fast grade, this is what you'll see. Um, you'll see information about the student, about the assignment, when it was submitted, um, and then here on the left, you have the student's code, and on the right, you have the solution code. And um, a cool thing about FastGrade is you can directly run it from this page, run the code. So this play button will run the student's code, and um, this key will run the solution code. So you're easily able to see 
um, if the student is, is doing something correctly or if they need a little bit more work. And you can grade directly from here. You can give feedback. Um, yeah, so you, you have a very quick option um, to, to quickly go through and grade student, um, student submissions. Another piece I'd like to show you from the um, review page is the help section. Um, so here you see questions um, that students have written into you. And this is what I mentioned earlier about um, conversations that are tied to a specific assignment. So I'm looking at a student, this is my student, Logan. This is what he sees when he's viewing 1.4. Um, and say he's completing this assignment and he needs assistance. If he goes to conversations, he can write in a question or a comment. And um, me as a teacher, I'll get a notification or I can also see it in my help queue. Um, and we are able to communicate here about this assignment. Um, and both you and the student will get notifications when you're responding. Um, but this is tied only to this specific assignment. Um, and also as a teacher, I'm able to quickly go to other students that are in this section as well. So I know we were talking about free and plural earlier. Um, and so a very quick way for teachers, actually all teachers, both on free and pro to switch and view different submissions um, is by this drop down menu at the top. Okay, so we have talked about so many tools so far. We just have um, a couple of more resources I'd like to show you. You know, Julia touched on resources, um, and there's a different couple different ways that you can access these resources. Um, so from your roster page, um, if you click resources from this page, you'll be taken to something that looks like this. And these are the resources for the specific course that that section is taking. So you'll see all of the handouts, um, both student and teacher versions, um, all of the lesson plans, and all of the um, problem guides as well. The keys are the solutions. And like Julia said, both um, free and pro teachers have access to the student solutions because we know that, that teachers need that in order to successfully teach the course. Um, and then the problem guides are solutions plus. So they also have um, reasoning for the lesson as well as frequently asked questions. Um, and anytime you see this little eyeball icon, you're able to click and view the assignment as if you were a student. Um, so you can also complete the assignments um, that are in your course, exactly how your students see them. Okay, so the other um, way that you can get to the resources is here on the left side navigation. And if you click here, the resources page you'll be taken to is this one. So it looks a little bit different. And this way, you're able to choose which course you're viewing resources for. Um, and so you have access to the same things, handouts, problem guides, lesson plans, um, glossary. And then also I wanna call attention to the, um, the first week resources um, right here. So even if you're a first year teacher or you just have new students who are new to CodeHS, this is great. It has lessons that help them get acclimated with CodeHS. Um, you have your syllabus, your solutions, um, as well as your CodeHS textbooks here as well. Okay. Another resource that we have is our um, course catalog. And so you can access your um, course catalog by clicking toolbox. Um, it's in my recent recent, but it's under your um, resources course catalog. And this is where you can view all of the courses that CodeHS has to offer. Um, and so this from this page, you can learn more, you can view the units, view the syllabus, um, and you're also able to enroll. So if you choose enroll, that means you are enrolling in the course as a student. Um, so you won't have access in that course to the solutions because you will be taking it as a student. Um, you can also add it to your courses. And this is what you would choose if you want to then add sections um, to take that course, or you have the option to assign and assigning is just adding it to a course that you already have. So for example, if um, in my introduction to JavaScript course, if I wanted students to automatically then complete the AP um, computer science principles and JavaScript course, I can assign it 
and they'd be able to see both courses in the same. So they'd see the intro to JavaScript and the AP um, CSP and JavaScript in the same course. Um, so you have an option to do that. And it's, it's very easy um, to customize that way. Let's see. Okay, and then I have a few more resources. I think in the parking lot, we there are a couple questions about um, creating your own assignments. Um, and so you can do that from, there, there are a couple, a couple of different ways that you can create your own assignments. Um, but the go-to page is um, create. Um, let's see if it'll load, you guys can see. It might take a bit, but this is a page I see your question, I'm gonna answer in just one second. Um, so this is a page where you're able to create your own assignments and um, anytime you create an assignment on CodeHS, you're able, it'll automatically go here to your list of assignments. So you can then um, assign them to multiple different courses or multiple different sections. Um, you can make copies of your own, of what you've made and make changes to them. So you can further customize your course that way as well. Um, yeah, so this is a very easy way for you to customize your course. And there's a question in the chat about the difference between assign and add to your courses. Um, so you would use assign if you already have a section or a course set up. So let me go back to the course catalog. So if I choose assign, um, you can assign it to a course that you already have, um, and then you can choose a section that you've already set up. However, if you haven't set up a section yet, what you wanna do is add to your courses. Um, so actually, I'm just going to add to my courses. I'm gonna add intro to um, computer science and Python, which is the course we're doing today. I'm going to add it to my courses. And then let's see. So here I am in my courses page. So now I've just added it to my courses. And from here, I'm able to um, add sections to it. Uh, so they're, they're kind, they're, they kind of achieve the same thing, but in different ways, the assign and add to my courses. Um, so you use assign if you already have a course or a section that you wanna add it to. Um, you use add to my courses if you are then going to um, make sections to add to your course. You're welcome. Okay, and then I know I talked about a lot of different tools today. And um, if you forget, or you wanna know other tools that we have, a quick way um, for you to do that is to go to your toolbox here in the top navigation panel. Um, this is a list of a lot of the tools and resources that we have. Um, you can also click here in this lower right-hand corner, view full toolbox, and that shows you all of the tools. Um, they also have links to knowledge-based articles and videos that are right next to the tools. So if you, if you wanna know more information about the tools, you can view them there. Um, also in the full toolbox, it has a very easy um, list of what is free and what is pro. So if you're um, curious about that, you can look there as well. The other very important tool that we have in this toolbox is, toolbox is our support. Um, so I mentioned knowledge base. Our knowledge base is, um, our, is where we hold all of our help articles. So if you have any questions, um, you should search in the knowledge base because we, we do a very good job of, of writing um, articles that have videos and GIFs showing you how to do something. Um, but you can also always contact us. So um, by clicking this, you will get in contact with me or my teammate, like Ursula here on the, on the call, um, and we'd be happy to chat with you and help you out that way. Um, so you can use contact us for questions about the curriculum, about the tools, or if you have suggestions, um, you can also write in there as well. And I think, I'm not sure if we saw it um, on this page, but so on this, uh, my teacher page, if you see this blue circle at the bottom with the little chat, smiley face icon, um, you can also click that and that'll open up links um, to contact us at support and also to the knowledge base as well. All right, that was a lot of talking. We are going to um, 
transition back to our slides and we can keep going from there. One second. Okay, so we talked about so many tools and resources. We also have so many more for you guys. Um, one that is very, very helpful is joining the CodeHS Educators Facebook group. Um, so like I said, you can always ask us here at CodeHS um, for, for assistance, but also a lot of your peers, your teachers um, also have great resources for you as well. And it's, it's pretty active. Um, so I highly recommend you join the group. You can um, follow CodeHS on social media. We post a lot. Um, and that's where we post a lot of new updates um, or suggestions that we have. And um, you can also attend lots of CodeHS workshops like this one. Um, so we have many other free um, workshops this summer that will be very helpful if you wanna learn about more courses, more resources, we definitely recommend that you um, sign up for those as well. And with that, I'm going to um, hand it off to Julia and she can keep going. Remember to post any questions you have in the parking lot doc. Thank you. Awesome, thanks Ebony so much. That was so many tools, so many different things that you um, have available to you on CodeHS. And um, like Ebony said, um, that knowledge base is an awesome place for you to get a lot of these answers. We have a lot of help docs there. Um, so if you are wondering about a specific tool, that's a really good place to go. Um, and you can always ask us, reach out to us and we can give you more information there as well. Awesome. So we are going to finish up today. We got a whole lot of info. Um, if you could take a few minutes to complete our survey for today, we wanna know, um, did you get what you came for? Any suggestions you have for what you would, what you would like to see in the future? Um, we are always trying to improve and get better um, and give you more um, information that is directly applicable to your classroom. So we're gonna drop that link into the chat, codehs.com slash workshop survey, and you can choose our workshop today um, to leave some feedback there. And as I said at the beginning of our session today, if you need a certificate for today to prove to show your admin or someone that you were here, um, we have a really short Google form for you to fill out, um, Python dash certificate, and um, that will be um, just asking for your name and your email. Just double check your email because we've had a few people who uh, mistyped their email and then aren't able to receive that certificate to the right place. Um, so make sure if you need a certificate for being here today for our session, you fill that Google form out. And thank you everyone for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Um, Ursula, if you could just drop that certificate link into the chat then we will be ready to go. Um, if you have any other questions, that parking lot is going to stay available. Um, we are um, gonna continue at answering any questions. So if you have any last minute questions you wanna add there, that would be awesome. And I really am excited um, to see what you all do with our Python course next year. All right, thank you everyone so much. Have a great day, a great summer. And hopefully we'll see you at another workshop soon.